Next, we want to be able to understand some key things that are going to be true about every graph of polynomial functions, and then get into something that we call the end behavior of a graph, and what's specifically true there about polynomial functions. Okay. So first of all, these are a couple of things that are going to generally always be true about every graph of a polynomial function. Okay. So what you're seeing right there versus right there. Um, it's definitely something that's always going to be true about polynomials. So you'll see that the first graph there is all connected, right? Versus the other one became disconnected at some point. So one thing that is going to always be true about polynomial functions or their graphs is that graphs of polynomial functions are going to always, uh, number one, be continuous. So like you can put your pencil on the paper and then you move your pencil around, but your pencil will never leave the paper, right? It has to be all connected. If it becomes discontinuous, like there's a hole or asymptote or a jump or whatever in the graph, that's not going to be the graph of a polynomial function, okay? So that's illustrated there. And then not only that, but the graphs of polynomial functions will always look like this versus like that. You'll notice that right there, there's a like sharp turn and Polynomial functions will never have sharp turns like that. Um, they're always going to be more like smooth looking, like you're seeing right there in number two. So these two characteristics about being continuous and smooth is 100% true about the graph of every single polynomial function that you'll ever encounter. Okay. So we should be able to recognize then that if we want to know graphs of polynomial functions, what they could possibly look like, okay? So we just need to determine which ones could be graphs of polynomial functions and actually will be. So when you look at graph A right there, you can see that right there, there is a sharp turn or what we would actually call a cusp point. That's never going to occur in polynomial functions. So that right there is not going to be a polynomial function because of that sharp turn, okay? In the second graph, you can see that um, there's like a discontinuity because there's like that vertical asymptote right there. So the graph is not entirely connected. So this one right here is not fully continuous. So therefore, this is not going to be a polynomial functions graph. Okay. Um, this graph right here looks continuous almost, except for the fact if you look close enough, there's a little hole right there. Okay. If that hole was actually plugged in and it was a straight line, then it would be a polynomial function because every linear function is a polynomial, right? It's, it's, it's smooth and continuous, there's no sharp turns. Um, but because of that hole, there is a discontinuity that's occurring right there. So therefore, it's actually not gonna be a polynomial function, okay? And then the last one is completely continuous and it's also smooth everywhere. So it's going to be the only one that is going to be the graph of a polynomial function that you're seeing um, among these four examples, okay? All right, so I just want to give you some examples of what graphs of polynomial functions could look like. So these would be polynomial functions that go in order from degree 0 all the way up to a quintic polynomial there with degree 5. Um, basically, I'll, I'll, as the degree gets higher, the more crazy the polynomial function could look, right? Um, we'll generally see that pattern as we look at more graphs and that sort of thing. But one thing that you'll want to kind of really extract and pull away in terms of what you're seeing with these graphs um, is kind of individually if we look at kind of what's happening with the highest exponents. So uh, specifically, the graph that you're actually seeing right here um, don't have anything like else added, right? So like this equation right here doesn't have any like lower exponents than six, it just is a monomial, right? So actually, equations that are a polynomial that are just a monomial, so x to the n, and could be multiplied by some coefficient a. Um, these are specific kinds of polynomial functions that are called power functions, okay? So a power function is only of that form, where there's only one term, so it's just a monomial, right? But what you'll notice is that all of the ones that have um, even exponents, you'll notice that the ends of the graph both point in the same direction, right? But the ones that have odd exponents as the highest exponent um, are actually pointing in opposite directions.
directions in the graph. And that's something that's going to always be true, not just in power functions, but in any polynomial functions. Okay, So you'll see kind of the four main things that could happen in terms of what's happening at the end of the graph. So you'll see that for this graph right here, that both of the ends are pointing up. So they're pointing in the same direction. But also in this graph right here, um, both of the ends are pointing down, but at least they're pointing in the same direction. Okay, So what those two graphs have in common is that they point in the same direction at least, and that's always going to correspond with the fact that the highest exponent in the polynomial function is an even number. Okay, So when you have a degree of the polynomial, that is an even number, right? So an even highest exponent, the ends are going to point in the same ways. Um, so what makes it go up and up versus down and down is just the coefficient of that same highest degree term. So we only need to look at the x to the fourth term in this polynomial, or we only need to look at the negative x squared term in that polynomial. So all of the lower degree terms do not impact the end behavior. It's completely just the highest degree term only that will tell you exactly what's happening in the end behavior of the graphs. Okay, So because there was a positive coefficient of 1 right there versus a negative coefficient right there, that tells you whether it's going to go up or, up or down and down. Okay, So we need to actually kind of do this a little bit more formally and so the notation that we would use to describe this end behavior is kind of as follows. So for this graph right here, if we follow the x-axis infinitely towards the left, then when I follow the graph, the y values actually tend to go upwards, right? So what we would say then is as the x values head towards negative infinity, so that means like if we just follow the graph infinitely towards the left, okay? then the y values, or the f of x values, whatever you want to use, um, tend towards infinity in this example, because as we go towards the left, the y values keep going up. Right? Now, in the opposite, if we make the x values go infinitely bigger towards the right, towards positive infinity, then if I follow the graph infinitely towards the right, the y values um, eventually tend off towards infinity because it goes up. Okay. So with this graph then, we'll see that actually the y values will tend towards negative infinity because it goes down and down, right? When x both goes infinitely towards the left and when x goes infinitely towards the right. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity, and then also as x goes to infinity, uh, y goes to negative infinity, okay? So the bottom two graphs, are going to be odd degree polynomials because you'll see that in this polynomial right here this end is going down versus this end is going up and then it's just kind of reverse directions in this example right here okay so because the ends go in different directions one goes up and one goes down vice versa then it's got to be an odd degree polynomial and you'll see that is definitely true because the highest exponent in each of these examples are odd numbers, right? Three and three, I guess, for the other one, too, right? So what makes it go down to the left and then up to the right versus the opposite is, again, the positivity or negativity of the leading coefficient. So all of these other terms here, the lower degree terms, this one doesn't have any, uh, they don't affect the end behavior at all. It's only coming, again, from the highest degree term. So because this has a positive leading coefficient and this has a negative leading coefficient, that tells you like what way it's going to go. So the way I remember it is like, okay, if this is a positive leading coefficient and I know they go different ways, then it kind of like goes like this, down and then up. So like that line that I drew kind of has like a positive looking slope, right? And then like right here, how it goes up to the left, but then down to the right, like then it kind of looks like a negative sort of slope, right, which corresponds to a negative leading coefficient. So that's the way that I kind of remember that. Um, and then when you describe the end behavior, make sure you use this sort of like infinity notation, right? So for this first graph down here to the bottom left, um, because it's going downwards to the left, that means that as x goes infinitely towards the left, 
the y values go infinitely downwards, and then as you follow the graph to the right, since the y values go up, we can say as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity, right? And then in this graph, you can see that y heads towards positive infinity to the left of the graph, so that's when x is going towards negative infinity, and then when x heads towards positive infinity, the y values go down, so y heads towards negative infinity, okay? So these were odd degree um, polynomials, right, at the bottom two examples. And then what ultimately differentiates these two from these two is here we had a positive leading coefficient. So our leading coefficient there was a positive one and a positive one there as well, right? Um, versus here we had a negative leading coefficient where we had a negative one or a negative three-tenths there, okay? So what we've described there is the end behavior of the graphs of the polynomial functions. We're describing what happens at the extreme ends of the polynomials and talking about what the y values are approaching as we make x become infinitely large in magnitude, whether that heads off towards negative infinity, you know, that greatness in magnitude, or towards the positive infinity, that greatness is in magnitude, okay? Um, so really, kind of just the biggest thing that I need you to, to do here is come up with this idea, the end behavior. Describe what's happening in terms of the end behavior of the graphs of these polynomial functions. Um, these things are going to be what you'll need to know about to help you describe the um, end behavior. So anyways, if we look at what the equation is for this right here, and we need to describe its end behavior, we can see that P is a polynomial function, right? So the end behavior is completely dictated by just the highest degree term. So since 5 is the highest exponent, we really only need to look at that particular term to describe the end behavior. So what we'll see is that the exponent of it is 5, which is an odd number. So what should happen with that then is the end should be going opposite ways. So either that should be happening where that end goes up and the other end goes down, or um, it'll be like the reverse where this end is going down and this end is going up. So how we tell the difference then is the leading coefficient. So since the leading coefficient is positive, then again, what I said earlier is like think of like a positive slope line, right? So then like it should kind of go like this, okay? And then, you know, there could be craziness that could happen in the middle, um, but in terms of the ends, it at least has to be going down this way and then up this way, okay? So that's going to basically tell you what the end behavior should be. Just put that in this notation that when x goes infinitely towards the left, the y value goes infinitely down. Right? So as x goes to there, y goes to there, that's a complete sentence. And then also, as x goes infinitely towards the right, y is going towards positive infinity. Okay? So um, basically what gave us that end behavior, right, was knowing that the leading coefficient of 2 was positive. So that helped us to know that this end goes down and this one goes up, right? And then because the degree was an odd degree of 5, that told you that these had to be different, right? That one end had to go down and one end had to go up, okay? So for the other example that you're seeing here, um, to describe its end behavior, you can see that this right here is going to be the highest degree term because the highest exponent there is 4. And then you'll want to make sure that that negative... Um, one, you consider that to be the leading coefficient, right? So you'll see that this has a negative leading coefficient, but the degree of it is even. So when the degree is even, the ends have to go the same way. So it's either going to be up and up or down and down. Um, but because of that leading coefficient is negative, it has to be down and down. So the end behavior is going to look like this. So then more formally, you'll say that when x goes infinitely towards the left, and then also as x goes infinitely towards the right, y is going to go infinitely down, and y is going to go infinitely down, right? Because both ends point downwards. So that describes the end behavior for what the graph of that polynomial function will look like. Okay. So if you're looking at a couple of graphs right here, these are graphs of polynomial functions, you'll be able to tell that because this one right here has an end that goes up, and this one right here has an end that goes down, that then when you write the equation for this, that when you have right here your 
highest exponent term and then a bunch of other stuff that follows it, you can tell a little bit about what that red A number must be and what that blue um, N number must be. So since the N ends of the graph here go in different ways, that tells you that this number right here has to be odd. So in other words, the degree has to be an odd number, right? So it has to be like a 3 or a 5, 7, a 1, something, right? And then this number right here tells you whether it's going to go um, up, down, or down, up, right? So since this one is going up this way and going down this way, you can kind of think, oh, it kind of looks like a negative slope line if I connect the ends, right? So therefore, that tells you that that number right there, the leading coefficient, has to be some negative number, whether it's like negative half or negative four or whatever, right? Some negative number, okay? So then like this polynomial, you can see that both of the ends are pointing in the same direction, so then the degree, the highest exponent, has to be some even number, like 2, 4, 6, 8, something, right? And then because they both point upwards, the leading coefficient, the number that multiplies with the term that has the highest exponent, has to be a positive number. So, and yeah, the leading coefficient is some positive number, therefore, there.